All right, so let's have a very gentle uh, introduction to feedback control. Okay, it's some, something that we will be looking at throughout the course, right? Which is what this course is really about. Okay, so today's lecture overview. Okay, we are going to introduce the concept of control systems. Okay, and uh, we will have to understand what a feedback control is, being able to appreciate uh, the importance of feedback control as a mean of achieving more reliable outcome. So when we want to achieve certain uh, output, we are using feedback control. And why is that so? We're going to discuss it later. And finally, we will discuss the past, present and perspective development in uh, the field of control as a very quick uh, introductory lecture. Right, let's take a look at the concept of control systems. So a control system is really something designed to achieve a targeted output or outcome uh, by generating the appropriate input in a dynamic environment. So uh, a lot of time as an engineer, we are also interested in making sure that this uh, control system is working within a specified uh, performance criteria. All right. So it is not just good enough to say whether something is working or something is not working. We want to know how well something is working and how badly it may uh, actually fail. Okay, so these are some of the, the important concepts. And in this course, we're going to look at a few very important aspects. So uh, you see those highlighted. Uh, we're going to, of course, uh, understand the need to achieve this target output by generating the appropriate input. And of course, we are dealing with dynamical system. Okay, so uh, the system that we are uh, working uh, with is actually a dynamical one, right? So it is not a static uh, system. There are uh, time varying uh, changes, all right? So this uh, schematic here that you see is really a uh, very good uh, summary of uh, what we are trying to say here, the concept of control system. You have an input and you are going to expect an output. And most of the time we have a target output. Okay, So we want to achieve a desired outcome. That is the uh, output. And we need to uh, pump in the right value. Okay. So let's look at some of the examples of control system. And I'm sure uh, some of these examples are already familiar to you, uh, probably in your daily life. And I'm sure some of them you have encountered, like your active suspension in your car. Okay, for those who have taken a dynamic class, you see this as a very common example almost every day. Right? Uh, so this doesn't just uh, appear in mechanical system. It can also be in other uh, system, other domain, like for example, uh, active noise cancellation. Uh, what they are trying to do here is of course also to uh, control the amount of uh, noise that the listener will be uh, subject to. The same thing as your active uh, suspension system, the mechanical suspension system is trying to let the uh, passenger or the driver uh, not feel too much of the disturbance due to the bumpy road. And at the same time, for a listener, uh, there are a lot of noise other than the music that he or she is listening to. So there's a need for active noise cancellation. How does this work? This is actually a very good example of feedback control, which is the important concept that we will talk about later on. But uh, basically, in this case, it, it is not just passive. It is active because it actually sends uh, the noise uh, outside and actually create an anti-noise signal to cancel out the noise. So it is not just like having a very thick buffer to uh, uh, attenuate all the uh, noise that is coming from the outside. Okay, that that is actually the passive uh, noise cancellation approach. Right, and you see other more interesting uh, example. Uh, air conditioning system is something that you see very often, and I'm sure you probably already understand 
uh, the working mechanism uh, using uh, the uh, temperature sensing, it can actually uh, reach the desired temperature uh, that is set by the user. Okay, so this is not something that I will uh, go too much into detail. Uh, in your motor control, it's something that you will be uh, doing in your lab for the undergrads. Okay, you will actually uh, see how the encoder, uh, the sensor that is attached to the motor can uh, eventually feedback. Uh, to the actuator, which is the motor in this case, to control the motor in a steady speed or uh, particular position. Okay, so there are position control, there are speed control, etc. And of course, force control, depending on the sensor that you have. Right? And of course, the uh, objective of the uh, control system designer. Right, and uh, one Less common example is the heart lung machine uh, in the medical domain. This is actually a, a medical system that will replace the heart, your heart and your lung during a surgery uh, where you need to stop the heart. Okay, so you need some form of device that will uh, carry out what the heart is supposed to do during a surgery that uh, uh, cannot allow the heart to continue beating, right? So in this system, you will see a lot of uh, intricate control uh, laws, uh, a lot of uh, control mechanism, whether it's controlling the temperature of the blood, the flow of the blood, and uh, the oxygen level in the blood and everything. So this requires a lot of uh, sensing capability and uh, ability to uh, do the uh, chemical exchange uh, and the uh, flow the fluid dynamic of the blood as well. So now let us uh, understand why is there a need uh, to implement control system. Okay, there are basically a few uh, reasons. I mean, you can classify them into a few reasons. Uh, first of all, is for power amplification. So this is actually a very common example. You will see a crane operator. Okay, of course, he might not be strong enough to lift this thing, but by uh, having this uh, control system, he's actually able to give command to this uh, control stick here, the controller here, and actually create this uh, motion, this powerful motion. So that is power amplification. And on the other extreme spectrum, uh, you can see motion scaling. This is actually something quite unique to uh, surgical uh, robotics okay so in um, robotic surgery you will have this uh, small actually not small robot but the end effector is rather small and can do very small and precise motion so it is very difficult for human hand to do this kind of uh, micro surgery uh, but you can actually control through the console this is what the uh, surgeon is doing uh, and the robot will actually replicate this uh, motion in a more intricate, uh, precise and smaller motion. Okay, so this is actually kind of like the same thing, in, but on the opposite side. Instead of doing something very powerful, it's doing something very precise, uh, but in a smaller scale. And so you also have other reasons like uh, remote operation, which is quite obvious. Sometimes uh, you don't want to go over and uh, bring this thing. So you want to do remote control, okay? So uh, control is also important for your remote operation. And um, ease of input is more of converting energy from one form to another, okay? So instead of, uh, for example, if you want to do a mechan if you want to do mechanical work, uh, but sometimes the input, uh, mechanical input may be a bit troublesome and you want to use some other form like uh, electrical uh, changing the voltage changing the uh, the uh, voltage level so as to create mechanical motion okay through motors etc so this will kind of uh, allow a, a ease of input or convenience of input and one very important uh, last reason that is listed here is the compensation of disturbance okay this will actually lead us to uh, explaining 
uh, the feedback control because a lot of time uh, having control system is really to be able to sense the environment and compensate uh, some of the disturbance that comes from the environment. Okay, so in the next uh, video segment, we will actually talk about uh, the uh, closed loop control. Okay, so as to have an understanding of our feedback control and compare it with the normal uh, open loop control. Right, I will see you in the next video segment.